Nutty, make another video. You haven't made a video for three months. Where are all the videos? Okay, sorry. I know I've made a video for a while. I've just, I've had a lot going on, but let's move past that. Okay, so a while back I made a video on using like fancy DSLR cameras for your stream to get like that super awesome quality. Like the camera I'm using now is exactly the same setup that I use for my stream. But uh, yeah, it seems that most of you guys didn't really care about that video, which I guess makes sense because you know, most of you guys are probably babby streamers and just started streaming and you don't want to sink like thousands of dollars or whatever the camera equipment. So I get it. I understand. So today I'm going to do you guys a solid and we're going to look at the complete other end of the price spectrum. We're going to look at a much cheaper option, like all the way down to like zero dollars. And spoiler alert, the quality is actually pretty good. It's not that bad. And the reason why it's going to cost zero dollars is because you're going to be using something you probably already have, probably something you're watching this video on. And, uh, that's your phone. Now I've watched a bunch of videos on this on YouTube already, and I wasn't satisfied with any of the videos because a lot of the people talk about paid apps or apps that just are hard to use or apps that just like, you know, like suck. Like the one that most people use is Droidcam, and I personally just hated using that. So we're we're not gonna use any of those. What we're gonna talk about is an app for Android that is actually really easy to use and completely free, no ads, none of that BS that all those other apps have. And then we're gonna compare it to the quality of like a Logitech C922, which is the camera that a lot of people seem to be using, which costs, uh, well, I don't know how much it costs, but it costs money and uh, yeah, this doesn't. So the app that we're gonna use is called Cam On. Cam on i should probably look this up before i make a video on it right cam on live streaming yeah cam on live streaming now unfortunately this app only works in android and there's no iphone app and i was gonna look for alternatives for iphone and go through that but unfortunately again yeah my iphone kind of like exploded i don't know if you can see that but yeah it, it exploded so that's that's not gonna work. If you are using an iPhone, Elgato makes an app called ScreenLink, I think. And I'm not sure if that's free or paid, but I'm sure that one will work fine as well because Elgato makes like good stuff for streaming. So if you have an iPhone, you can try, uh, yeah, try ScreenLink. Elgato, if one of you guys is watching, which let's face it, you're not because I ain't got that clout yet. But if one of you is watching, release the ScreenLink app for Android, I wanna test it out already. Now, some of you guys watching this might already have a webcam, but I still recommend that you watch this video because, you know, using your phone as a webcam can be pretty cool. You can like use it to like, uh, you know, I don't know when you're taking a break from your stream and you like wanna walk around your house or something, you can use your phone just like as a temporary mobile camera around your stream. So it's like, it's still pretty good. Also, I want you to watch the video because then I get like ad revenue and stuff, but but the first reason. So with that being said, let's talk about the Android app and we'll walk you through how to set all that up. What's up guys, it's Nighty. Before we get started, if you guys are interested in improving the production quality of your streams, make sure to subscribe to this channel because like, I don't know, like once every like three months, I decide to make a video. Now, cameras. Now the app that we're going to be using is called Cam on Live Streaming and you can find it on the Android app store. It's really easy. It's completely free. There's no ads, none of that garbage. And the app's like intended to be used as like a wireless IP camera. So it's used for like surveillance or like as a baby monitor or something. But where? We're going to be smarter. We're going to use it for your stream. And basically the way the app works is it takes everything that's coming from the camera from your phone and sends it out over your wireless network to your streaming PC and then your streaming PC will just see everything that your phone is showing. So this is really awesome because it works wirelessly. So if you like want to grab a snack or something or like walk around your house or like, you know, show other stuff around your, I don't know if you want to do anything like that, you can just like walk around with your phone and it's just completely wireless. So once you got the app downloaded, you basically just open it up and your camera fires up and pretty much just works right away. There's, there's really no setup involved. Now, first thing you might want to do is you might want to change which camera you're using. Cause by default, I think it uses the back camera. So you might want to use the front facing camera so you can like see yourself. So yeah, to do that, you basically just go to the settings and then you like click on that cog thing and then go to input device and select the camera that you want to use. Now you can also set the resolution of the camera. Now just keep in mind, if you set the resolution too high, then you'll get a lot of latency. And if you set the resolution too low, then 
then the quality is gonna like suck. I would recommend setting it to 720p for the best balance of quality and latency, but play around with it, see what works best for you and yeah, just go ham. Okay, so for now we'll leave the phone alone. We'll come back to it later because there's probably gonna be some other settings that you might wanna change, but let's go back into OBS and we'll set that up. And this is the part that I love about this app. You don't need to download any software, everything you need to make this app work. You can just do it within OBS. So we need a way of receiving the phone signal and the way we're going to do that is, well, there's two ways. There's one, which is adding a browser source in OBS and two, using a media source in OBS. And both those things can be done by default. You don't need to install anything. For both of those options, you're going to want to put in the IP address of your phone, which is really easy to find because it tells you in the app. So you just go to the cog, go into information, and then under local network addresses, it's going to have three links. So if you're going to go through the first option, which is to add a browser source in OBS, then you use the second link, which is the MJPEG link. And then if you're going to add a media source in OBS, then you'd use the RTSP link, which is the third link. Okay, so what are the differences between using a browser source or a media source? Because I didn't explain that before. Now, if you want to record the audio coming from the microphone on your phone, then you have to use a media source. The only problem with that is you're gonna have a little bit of latency. So if you need better quality and lower latency, then you're gonna have to use a browser source. So to add cam on as a browser source, just go into OBS, add a browser source, put in that MJPEG link as the URL, and then make sure to change the resolution to the resolution that you set on your phone. Now the default settings might look really good right off the bat, but you might notice the latency might be really bad. So if that's the case, go into the app, go into the cog, and then under MJPEG, there'll be an option for changing the quality and the frame rate. For me, what works really well is to set the frame rate to 30 FPS and the quality to 75%. So that to me worked really well. Again, you might, you might have to adjust it for your settings because your network connection might be slower. So just play around with it, get it down to a quality that you think looks good and where the latency is not insane. Now, if you're gonna add cam on as a media source, then go into OBS, right click, add a media source, then put in the RTSP link. Again, the latency might be really bad. So if that's the case, go into the cog in your app and then go into RTSP and you're gonna have to change the quality there. So for me, the quality that works great is 4,000 kilobits per second and 30 FPS. And I've also enabled the audio because I wanna be able to hear myself as I walk around the room. But like I said, if you don't need any audio, you should be just adding a browser source instead because you're gonna get better quality and better latency. But, uh... Yeah, that's basically it. Like I said, the setup is just super simple. So next time you want to use your camera or your phone as a camera, you, you just open up the app and then OBS should just see it and you're good to go. So all that is left to do is to pull out my C922 and we can compare the quality. So I chose the C922 because it's the camera that I have. I'm not gonna, what do you think? I'm gonna buy a camera just to test it for you. So let's pull it out, compare the quality against the cam on Android app. Okay, so I tried to match the angle as best as I could, but yeah, they're, it's kind of off. It's the best that I could do. So we got our C922 and we got our phone, which is, it's a, if you're curious, it's a Xiaomi Mi Max 2. It's a Chinese phone, okay? But anyway, on the left, we've got the C922, which is, again, it's the camera that seems to be what everyone is using. And then on the right, we've got our Android phone. So I'm gonna try let you guys be the judge, but just, just looking at the OBS preview, I think there's a pretty big difference. I think the phone, I think the phone's actually doing a better job. So for both of these, I haven't actually changed any of the colors. I've had no color correction. This is just the raw feed coming out of both of the cameras. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some color correction and I have a video coming up hopefully pretty soon that's going to show you guys how to do some color correction so stay tuned for that but let's let's add the color correction okay so here are both cameras now i've added the color correction they're, they don't exactly match but i think they're both okay so i'm gonna just start moving my arms around like all crazy and stuff so one of the big uh things you'll notice is the camera has a smoother frame rate so it's less uh like jarring i guess and the phone seems to have like an inconsistent frame rate but i think for most people that just have like their camera like small in your like gameplay window i think for the most part that's fine but i actually think the phone just is it's 
a lot clearer to me. And obviously, I don't know which camera I'm looking at. Anyway, I'll look at the phone camera. So obviously the results are gonna be different depending on what phone you have, but this is just a cheap phone. So I'm sure if you have like a really nice phone, you might even get better quality than this. Now I will say this, the one advantage, I guess, of the webcam, the USB webcam is that you do get like a wider field of view. So you can get like more of your room, I guess. And I guess the other advantage is it's super easy to mount because you can just like slap it on top of your monitor. I think, I think what I might try is you can get those like clamps on eBay that have like the light. So like, yeah, you can do that. Also, what I am noticing is that the phone is doing kind of this focus breathing thing. So I'm pretty sure there's a setting to like turn that off. Let me go check. Okay, so I found it. There was a setting to turn off continuous autofocus. So I do highly recommend turning that off. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I think the quality is actually really, really impressive. And just so you guys can see, this is what the C920 looks like full screen compared to how the phone looks like when it's full screen. and. The thing that you can do with the phone, that you can do with C920. It's even like, you can just like take this thing, just like walk around the room with it. You can like, you can see like my setup back here. See like the, like the portal gun. You can see like my squirtle and all my microphones and stuff, my keyboards. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that with C920, can you? So hopefully you guys learned something today. Remember, sometimes it's not about having the most expensive equipment. Sometimes it's about just using things you already have in the most creative way possible. So if you guys are gonna use your phone as a webcam, make sure you think of creative ways to use it. Don't just use it as a replacement for a USB webcam. Think of ways that you can like use it as a mobile webcam. You know what, in fact, let's do something. Let's get let's get some of that YouTube engagement going. Whoa, yeah, engagement. <laughs> Why don't you guys write down in the comments down below the most creative way you can think of to use a mobile webcam. Just try Write an idea. Try to think of creative ideas. Don't just say, I'm going to use it as a replacement to a C922. Think of something creative. That's going to do it for today. If you guys want to ask me any questions related to streaming, make sure to jump into my Twitch stream. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. You guys can also join the Discord. I do intend to do a massive overhaul. So I can add channels where you guys can ask me questions or give me like video ideas. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, you guys have yourselves a good week and I will see you guys hopefully, hopefully this time very, very soon.